Hello, my soccer diverse. Unexpectedly, I'm wearing frost. I had looked for quite a while that we might have Belgium making it to the first major final of the so-called golden generation. I actually hate that term uh, because it implies that you need to win gold. What did the Portuguese golden generation win? A silver medal somewhere. Maybe you can aggregate them in the for I think that Belgium already made it up to a bronze medal is for me enough for a golden generation because Belgium though having some pedigree is not and I repeat is not a superpower in the world game and therefore I actually think I'm not that disappointed by the golden generation because they have been mainstays at big tournaments for a while and while they might have twice disappointed at the Euros, I think at the two World Cups where they have participated, they did more or less as one would expect. So, that much to me for the golden generation. But I'm wearing France 2010. Yes, yesterday I was wearing Spain 2010. The two best jer jerseys of the 2010 World Cup, in my opinion. So, yeah. I actually like the Spain a teeny bit more because it's maybe not as busy as all the France one. Really, really so very, very close very close second in my book. Um, uh, speaking of Spain, by, by, by the way, I felt yesterday I didn't speak enough, highly enough of Spain uh, because, you know, it was right after the game, as is this video, Spain totally deserved to win this one. And I forgot to mention that uh, there was a huge chance by Oyar Sabal that could have made it three and so on. So yeah, uh, the result was probably even flattering four. Uh, Italy a little bit and but I also want to say that now everyone is saying Spain are the World Cup favorites no please hold your horses it's a year up until then and we know that where Spain has trouble Spain has trouble when there's a tight defense but Belgium against France so Belgium hasn't beaten France in a long time and you know they are wanting to surely get revenge for the semi-final defeat where they felt that they lost unfairly to France I don't I don't agree with that either. I'm very <laughs> controversial today. I don't agree with that either because um, I think France largely really had control of the, of the game. Yes, they did only what they needed, needed to do. Today, France needed to stretch themselves a whole lot, lot more. I mean, from the beginning, I, I have to say the first 25 minutes were highly entertaining um, with, uh, I think, a big chance from De Bruyne, saved already by Hugo Lloris, then Mbappé. Uh, fires up his turbo boost but it goes a little bit too too far uh in in any way but uh it became clear that especially offensively and especially thanks to the Bruyne the um, attack for France is taking uh, the attack for, for for Belgium is taking over the game and I felt for me for the, I want to say for almost 60 minutes for me the uh story of the game was that um the front three are not clicking it is all piecework it's just not working uh in some ways it reminded me of do you remember <laughs> not really nigeria against france at 2014 world cup where nigeria also for 60 minutes i think was the better team and then france scored two goals so yeah uh i'm not saying that belgium in the first half was two goals better which they then got but I felt that Belgium is a more has a more complete performance and got the tactics spot on and really attacked the weaknesses of a France side that just did not seem to click on any level. So it was, uh, and then I yeah, and I might be a little bit too uh, how to say picky here, but I also felt that Hugo Lloris let France down. The first goal, yes, it got a slight deflection, uh, the shot from Carrasco. However, it was only the slightest one. He's standing there and it's in the near corner. Uh, at least a reaction. And then the second one was, a, yes, it was a uh, brilliant run by Lukaku, who then yanks it into the net. But I am thinking, if this is Manuel Neuer, that ball is not going, going, going. Uh, And at that point, yes, Yuri's great save on De Bruyne in the first, first half. He made uh, two more uh, really good saves. But... At that point, I thought Yoris is kind of over, over, over the hump. Is this the time to make a change towards Magnon, who is he's a brilliant goal goalkeeper, I have to say. So 2-0 at the half for Belgium, uh, like yesterday, and um, I didn't necessarily see a way for France to come back. However, Belgium, I think, committed one crucial mistake in that game, and that is in 
although it worked for about 10-15 minutes really well, they just sit back and let France come and kind of like, you know, beat us. And that was the trouble. They did not keep up the game where you attack uh, the front. They just hung back. And let's be honest, the f Belgian defense is not the sturdiest one. Although, uh, when the whole thing started, that France got into the game and it's f more or less. I think Belgium let France back into the game and then couldn't turn turn on, on, on anymore. There was a big chance by Griezmann where he just couldn't get his feet sorted and for me at that point was, yeah, Griezmann again, very disappointing. And now even for France, cannot get, get it going. However, Bonsema makes it 1-2. One, one, and from that moment on, then the game slightly starts uh, started to turn. Griezmann wanted to have a penalty and then he gets a penalty because Tielemans kicks first his foot which causes Griezmann to kick the ball. To be honest, yes, it had to go through VAR. When you see it in live action, I can see that he's kicked over there, but I, I think, wouldn't this be more uh, a situation for an indirect free kick than a penalty foul? In any case, Mbappé, and that was all the thing. Why is Mbappé step, stepping up? Yes, I know why he's stepping up. He wants to be the star of the team and he wants to um, undo the demons from the Euros. However, very honest. Um, this should be Griezmann's penalty. Uh, he has been taken. And this was another thought that I had during the game. Why did it work for France um, so well at the World Cup? Because Mbappé was not this over, this star who wants to be now the leader of, of the team. This was more, very much Griezmann's and Pogba's team. And now it moves over to Mbappé and now you have with Benzema. Uh, much more talented striker than Giroud is. However, you also lose a little bit of the stability because you now have two big stars up front that yeah, can take everyone uh, on that they like. But um, yeah, it just seems to not, it doesn't seem to be made to last in many, in many ways. And is it unfair to say that this is kind of the shift that happened when uh, at the 98 World Cup? Henri and Trezeguet were still youngsters and still in 2000 Henri could kind of harnish, was still not the star, but as soon as Henri came the star, famously Zidane only assisted one of Henri's goals and then the French team didn't work anymore because there were too many uh, stars in the team and maybe this is a problem that's coming up. However, it did not happen here, Mbappé is converse the penalty and then Belgium was on the ropes. Yes, they tried to come again. But I think at that point, it seemed almost inevitable that France is scoring the third goal. And then the goal was scored by Lukaku. Brilliant uh, run from Carrasco, who serves it to Lukaku, who puts it into the net. And it was a fraction of sight. Uh, at that point, I thought, yeah, this is going to overtime. And at that point, the game was very, very entertaining. That I really thought, yeah, this could uh, be a very nice overtime. But Theo Hernandez, Milan. And I'm so happy that a Milan player is playing a part in this um, uh, um, final four because for Italy there's hardly any Milan player. Uh, he scores the winner and I thought actually the way he got the ball served that the chance is already over but he yanks it in uh, and then France almost played on. There was one chance where Lukaku with a little bit luck could have gotten to hold the ball but then France plays it home and so we have a Spain-France final. I realized also that France probably will have to play twice in white I do like the jerseys, but the red against white, when there could be red against blue, is a matchup that I was not so excited about. I think I can live with Spain, because Spain has at least uh, red and blue against the white of France. I think it should be alright, but I would rather see France in a traditional get-up uh, and Spain, you know, with navy socks. That would be pretty sweet. Uh, France are slight fa favorites make of it what you want. I want to see how Spain is doing. This is a very intriguing final to me. Uh, can't wait for it. I will not watch the third place matchup. Uh, although it is also not boring because you know it's in front of home fans and Belgium blah blah blah. Uh, but Spain France that sounds like a fun game. Um, my model has France favorites. Uh, pure talent maybe. But team wise I think that Spain Together with Italy is one of the best coach teams, at least in Europe. And so that's 
I want to see what Luis, Luis Enrique will do because he had the perfect tackle against the Italians yesterday. Let me know what you thought about the game uh, the, uh, tonight. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Drop a line below uh, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay updated with everything that happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.